on that day, the 27th of August, 1979, I was sitting on the back patio with Paul's father and Aunt Lisa. Paul said, goodbye, Mum, see you in the evening. I didn't think that was the last time I would ever see him alive. Beautiful morning it was, sun was shining. They left Mullockmore Pier and travelled out to where they had some lobster pots. This is where we were. Yes, looking out, you could see the boat as it came along. Dennis Devlin was a 15-year-old whose family came to Mullach Moor every summer. Their caravan was parked just off the coastal road. <laughs> As they come in, I could hear them talking. Talking among themselves. As the boat pulled up, I remember the young fella over the side of the boat pulling in the lobster pot and slowly pulled it in. The boat had turned round towards me and I was just watching it and I knew it was Lord Mountbatten's boat. The next thing, everything was screwing up under there. Everything just rose up and the news was exploding. Suddenly there was a flash of light and a loud bang. And you could see the boat had just disintegrated. It was obvious that a bomb had gone off. There was a mighty bang, a huge crack like thunder. And I immediately said, Paul is dead. And I knew he was dead because I felt a part of me go. My brother, sister and I were taken into the study and before anything, we were asked to take these pills with a glass of water. I'd never taken a pill in my life before. And that, to me, was more surprising than anything of that day. I couldn't understand why I was being made to take a pill. Again, I think it's so reflective of the era that they were in, in the 1970s, that you would, someone would have had Valium on them, for God's sakes, and said, let's give it to the children. I mean, dear God, would you give an 11-year-old a Valium? I, for some reason, left the castle and ran down to the beach, which wasn't helpful at all, um, and incredibly inconsiderate of me now, I look back. I remember sitting on the rocks down at the beach, in my mind going over 27th of August, 27th of August, and I kept saying 1979, I'll never forget this date. And I don't, I don't. Every year that date comes around and, and we remember it. Um, and, um, and, uh, and, and it was just such an incredibly beautiful day. And on the rocks, this incredible view. Um, and yet, you know, destruction. I'm so sorry, I don't, I don't normally get upset. <laughs> I remember it very vividly, every, every moment of it really, from the very start to the very end of the day, and I think I'll always remember it. Lord Mountbatten's boat had exploded, so immediately I got two friends and we went out on the boat to see what we could do. And um, we arrived there, and those other boats that were in the near vicinity, they were already lifting the survivors. And at what point did you realise that no. Barton himself had been killed? I think when, when we actually took him from the boat that he'd been brought ashore in and uh, brought him to the ambulance, that's the first that I realised that he had actually being one of the fatalities. He, he was one of the first sexually taken ashore. It 
It was a perfectly ordinary day, that August bank holiday. I was helping to put together the lunchtime bulletin for Radio Ulster. Nicholas Witchell was a trainee reporter at the time in the BBC newsroom in Belfast. We uh, received a tip-off from somebody we knew, suggesting that there had been an explosion reported at Mullochmore in the Republic of Ireland. I do remember forming the words on my pad, Mountbatten, dead. By now, all but one of the bodies of the boat party had been recovered. Lord Mountbatten and Paul Maxwell had been killed instantly. The 83-year-old dowager fatally injured. The parents of the twins were also seriously wounded, as was 14-year-old Timothy. His twin brother, Nicholas, was still missing. You could see this beautiful blue azure sea just off to the north end of the little peninsula, which Mullochmore is. We could see a lot of debris splinters of wood. It was fine debris, quite fine debris it was. I was winched from the rescue helicopter. I was placed into the water beside what looked like the bubble of an anorak. I placed my hand and pulled it, and it didn't yield very easily, and I pulled it a second time and it was then the head come up with the jacket as I pulled, and I realised it was a child. Imagine what those thick Aran sweaters must have felt like clogged with oil and water being lifted out of the, out of the ocean, and, you know, how long had Nick been floating in the water, you know? It was the first child that I handled in death. It came as a, a terrible shock to me, I can tell you, but I'm in rescue mode. I need to get him out of that water. I need to give him over to his family. 14-year-old Nicholas Natchbull's body was returned to Mullochmore Harbour. It's uh, the last photograph we have of Paul. That's Paul. And that is Nicky and Timmy. So one boy survived and the other two were killed. He survived because he was up on the roof. Mountbatten was in the middle between Paul and Nicky. And so they got full blast. <laughs> 